So I wanted to talk about some stuff that Scarlet and Violet may be missing. Okay, so we got loads of new information about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet last week, and I did a video about it on Friday, talking about everything, you know, it was like, I, I called it, what have they done? Because I wanted to sort of inform about what they'd done, but also like, what have they done? <laughs> so there was quite a lot that I covered there and it was gonna be a really long video. So I wanted to kind of like wait, gather my thoughts about some of the things that, you know, I wanted to discuss in today's video. So we're gonna pick a few things and just kind of like try and go in them a little bit further, looking at the website, looking at the trailers and stuff. And yes, we're gonna be discussing the gym scaling versus not scaling thing, because it's, a little bit unclear, but we'll get around to that last, so stick around. Let's get on with it. Sasha Burns commented on our last video with concerns that you are gonna be forced into a storyline and then you must complete it before moving on, which, you know, makes it not really feel like an open world experience because you'd be forced into a linear progression. However, don't worry, because the website clears that up, saying that you can freely go back and forth between all three stories, allowing your adventure to develop in the way that you want it to. So that's good news. So that does imply, you know, this is more of an open world experience in the fact that you can just freely go and do any sort of missions and storylines that you want. You can start one story, get part way through it and go, you know what, I actually want to go and do something else now. And then you can go do that. You're not locked into that one sort of progression path of that story. You can literally go and do whatever you want. That's good. That is said on the website. So I was quite happy to read that. <laughs> and the other thing as well is, I believe, even though we only know about one story, which is like the gyms and all that stuff, I think the other two stories are purely being held back as a way of building hype. They don't want to let the cat out of the bag too early. We've still got like a little way off yet until we can actually play the game and they don't want to tell you everything, right? So I do believe that all three stories are going to be in the base game. I don't think you're going to have to be forced to, to wait for a DLC or anything like that. I, I'm pretty sure, at least this is what I'm kind of like projecting and foreseeing, right? That all three stories are just going to be in the base game from the get-go. Okay, so now I want to discuss, which I brought up again in the previous video, about voice acting, right? Because I kind of said, I'm saying it now, 99.9% .9 sure there's going to be zero voice acting, all right? And well, I got some comments about that. There was some for voice acting, like me, and then some against it as well, but one commenter said this. So friendly otaku commented with the reasoning behind this during the sword and shield sort of development. I'm gonna butcher this name, but Shigeru Omori said there's two reasons. And the first was about localization, how difficult it would be, you know, which is kind of saying like, oh, well, there's so many different languages. We'd have to get so many different voice actors. And they were pretty much implying that it's gonna be expensive. I don't believe that for a second. It's Nintendo and the Pokemon company. <laughs> like, they have so much money. That is not a reason at all. That, that, like, I, I discount that entirely. That's rubbish, right? Like, I don't believe that for a second. If they wanted to, they absolutely could do when you look at so many other games that are localized in so many different areas. Anyway, the other reason was more realistic. So the second reason was character image. So a voice provides characters a set image that the player cannot generate for themselves. So with text alone, just like reading a book, a player can create their own image of that character. I think that's totally understandable. Like that, that is a genuine reason, which is like, okay, that makes sense. You know, most people playing an RPG, like a long RPG game are expecting a lot of text. However, when you look at Xenoblade, which is a monstrously long set of games, they've got voice acting for the mainline stuff and the mainline characters. Everything else is text-based, right? So why can't they do that? And the same with the whole like localization thing. You don't need to make everyone voice acted. You don't need every single trainer that you meet voice acted. You don't need everyone. Just the mainline stuff, the professors, maybe your best friends and the gym leaders, you know, any kind of like cutscene that's gonna progress the mainline storyline, have some voice acting. I don't wanna all voice acted because like you said, I wanna create my own perception of certain characters, but like the mainline ones, I don't care. I'd rather have some voice acting because I just find it incredibly boring. Like I've been playing these games since the mid nineties, right? That was fine back then. <laughs> the, the games couldn't 
even have voice acting like in handheld Pokemon games, right? But now, nearly 2023, you know, we're, we're getting there, right? Almost 20 years later, or 30 years? I think it's pushing 30 years now, isn't it? Um, anyway, it's so far, it just kind of annoys me. Like, I loved playing Pokemon Arceus, you know, Legends Arceus, but, oh man, it was just so boring mashing the buttons, like, through text and text and text. And yes, I know there was some, like, minor stuff in there, but, oh, I don't know. I just, I want some sort of engagement from the characters, some sort of sound effect, whatever it may be, but, like, voice acting on the mainline people would be amazing, and I'm... I'm 99.9% .9 that's not gonna happen. And I know I've been pulling this up ever since Scarlet and Violet has been announced like way back when, but there's not gonna be a throwing mechanic. I really truly believe that that is locked to the Legends series because I really believe that Pokemon Legends Arceus is the first of many Legends games to come. And that's gonna be the whole like, go and catch a Pokemon kind of thing, like more on that front. And then this being a mainline generation game, right? With the two copies and stuff, this is still gonna be battling Pokemon to capture them. Because they've already said that anyway on the website. It specifically says, battling Pokemon to capture them. So there's not gonna be that Legends Arceus kind of like throwing mechanic where you can crouch around and get behind grass and throw your Pokeballs. That's that's not gonna happen. So I'm okay with that now. I mean, initially after playing Arceus, I was like, I'm never going back. I never wanna play anything else that's not like this. And whilst that's still kind of true, I think because of the whole open world aspect of this game and so much that is changing, like I, I think I can overlook the whole throwing mechanic thing and be okay with the old school, okay, right, I'm gonna fight this Pokemon first to, you know, try and capture it rather than like hiding behind a bush and like trying to throw it. Maybe they progress to that later on, who knows? But right now there's not gonna be any throwing mechanic. I can pretty much foresee that, uh, you know, that, that's okay. I just wanted to bring it up again that there's something else that this is potentially missing. Okay, now the big one, the big one, the biggest thing ever, no scaling for gyms. So how does this work, right? So in the video last week, I put up, you know, a whole section about the gyms because they are saying this is an open world game. It's not open zone like Arceus. This is a true open world. You can go do whatever you want at any point. And there's gyms. So they're saying, go to any gym at any stage. So my initial thought, which is what I said in the video, is, well, it's gonna be scaling. There's no other way around it because otherwise you have no freedom of choice if the first Pokemon, you know, gym that you find is the hardest one. You're never gonna be able to do it. So therefore it is locking you into a linear progression again, like the old school games. So I don't know how they can say that they're gonna you're able to go to any gym first if there isn't scaling. Now, apparently, according to leaks and stuff like that, there's no scaling. Loads of people in the comments told me, no, there's no scaling. It's been confirmed. Well, there's no actual confirmation of this, like in terms of they have not come out right and said no. They are hinting that there isn't, but I don't know if that's true or not. So let's take a look at what the website says. There are facilities called Pokemon Gyms in many towns, and the leaders of these towns are awaiting the challenge of trainers like you and your friends. I don't know why I'm talking like this. There is no set path to gyms. You can purposefully seek out a stronger gym leader, or you can simply stop by a gym that happens to be located in a town that you've come across on your journey. This time, you get to plot your very own path along Victory Road. So they've just contradicted themselves. They've just said, you can go to any gym, anywhere you want, to create your own path for the first time ever. However, they also then say, or you can seek out stronger gym leaders for like a, a challenge. So that is a contradiction right there. Go and see any gym that you want and tackle any eight gym leaders any way you want. But then you're forced to find, seek out tougher gym leaders? What? So my theory, right? Hear me out, hear me out. My theory here is there's eight gyms, right? I think in each small town, there's going to be a small gym. And let's just say for the sake of it, there's five, 
five of these gyms, right, in small towns dotted around wherever. And those are scalable, because it says any gym that you've found in the town, maybe just try that out, right? So I reckon you're gonna go to smaller gyms and those will be scalable. You can tackle them in any order, but then I reckon there's probably three gyms that are actually like higher tier ones. And instead of them being in a town, they are actually their own like Colosseum style thing. You know, like they have their own building on the top of a hill or something that is a specific place just for these tougher gym leaders, essentially. Because then that gets around the whole scalable thing. And also the, the like idea that there's gonna to be tougher gym leaders. If there was five normal ones and then three, you know, like higher tiered ones, well these five, you can go in any order and they will essentially scale to you. But then these other three are gonna be like a higher level and a challenge for you to beat. Because that's then straddling both lines, isn't it? That's still then you being able to choose whatever gym you wanna to go to and essentially scale your level by going to these smaller gyms. And then you're then also gonna have the non-scalable gyms, which are gonna be these like three more of a challenge ones that aren't located in a town situation. That is my theory. I could be totally and utterly wrong. They might not be scalable at all. It might be the fact that they're lying to you on the website where it says, this time you get to plot your very own path along Victory Road. Because if they are not scalable, you can't choose your own path because you're not gonna be able to fight and complete that gym battle because it's gonna to be too high a level. So how's it gonna work? There's a contradiction there. There is a little bit more to it on the website because it says the Paldea region has Pokemon League and a special class of pro ranked trainers who have achieved champion rank. These trainers have grown with their ability to be able to dazzle audiences with their skills in battle. And then later it says, if you beat all eight gyms spread across the region and collect their gym badges, you will then be able to take on a special test called the champion assessment and successfully passing this, you know, you'll be a champion rank. So my theory again goes back to this five, three thing. I think the five normal gyms that are in towns are not champion ranked gym leaders. They're just standard gym leaders. And then these three other are gonna be champion ranked gym leaders that will be in their own locations, right? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking five normals, three champion leaders, and that, that would just kind of make sense to me. And it, I'd be okay with that. But if they're not scalable whatsoever, and they're kind of lying to us by saying, go and choose any order you want, but then you can't because they're all level cap locked and they don't scale, that's gonna be a huge bummer. But anyway, I've been rambling about this too much. What are your thoughts with this new information that I'm like kind of looking at a different perspective on, on the website? I mean, I really think that there's gonna be something like this going on, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are. But I just wanted to kind of say, I always find Pokemon a little bit like Apple, not to like bash on Apple or whatever, but, Apple I find always holds back. They're always putting the bare minimum next because they're always releasing something new. So I'm only taking this because it's always like every year there's a new phone, right? And every year they're always slightly outdated already. You know, within six months you've, of you owning that phone, it's outdated. But in realistic terms, in their like R&D like department, they're gonna be probably three years ahead or more. And they're purposefully drip feeding you this content this technology to keep you in the game because if they gave you everything you're gonna buy that one and you'll be done for five years or more and it's all about money everything is a business apple's a business pokemon's a business nintendo's a business if they give you too much too soon you don't care for anything else that they're going to be doing and i always feel like pokemon are doing that and that's kind of why i've not bothered for a while and that's why i was really hyped by legends arceus because it was so different they flip turned the whole formula on its head and that excited me because i get bored of being drip fed stuff and i still feel like they're holding back a little bit now but i am really excited by all the news and stuff that's you know all the new things that are coming to this game and anyway if you enjoyed this video go down there like this video and subscribe share it around to anyone you think is going to be helpful let me know what your thoughts are on everything down in the comments and if you haven't seen it well then go and check out this video just here which is my deep dive video about everything that's on offer from the new pokemon scarlet and violet games this is my deep dive onto all of the stuff that they announced last week so go and check that out if you haven't already and subscribe just do it Subscribe and, you know, be cool.